Hello class, this is Demetrius Wilson again with Principles of Management. We are now on chapter 4, moving right along. And in chapter 4 we will discuss uh, developing mission, vision, and values. As a company you have to have a mission that's connected to the company's values and uh, also connected to uh, their day-to-day -day vision uh, and also their uh, throughout the month, throughout the year vision that they may have. Some companies really key in on this a lot more than others, but uh, it is something that is valid in all work organizations. So as always, what are our learning objectives? Understand the roles of mission, vision, and values in planning process. Understand how mission and vision fit into planning, organizing, leading, and controlling. See how creativity and passion and creativity relate to vision. Incorporate stakeholder interest into mission and vision, right? So remember, a stakeholder is not a shareholder who buys uh, a shares in a company, but a stakeholder is anybody affected by that company, whether they work at the company, buy things from the company, have relatives that work at the company, things of that nature. You want to develop statements that articulate the organizational mission and vision, right? Articulate it clearly and concisely, and apply mi mission, vision, and values to your personal and professional career. You can have your own mission and your own values as opposed to just adhering to what's going on at the company. So as always, we have our planning, organizing, leading, and controlling. Uh, you can always check and, and verify on that slide, but uh, very key things that they're trying to, trying to deal, drill down on and then kind of drill into your brain that you have these things because these are the key functions of management which are planning, organizing, leading, and controlling. So mission and vision uh, as planning, organizing, leading, and controlling components. The strategy is how the firm aims to realize uh, its mission and its vision. And so at the very, very top of that pyramid is uh, in the orange is your mission and vision. And then below that is the strategy. How are we going to get to that mission and vision? And very, at the very, very bottom, you have goals and objectives. Uh, your goals, like I said, are long-term, and uh, your objectives are short-term uh, little sprints here and there uh, that lead up to the goals, which lead up to the strategy, which lead up to the mission and the vision. Goals and objectives are uh, indicators of how well the strategy is actually succeeding. So let's talk about mission, vision, and uh, values. So 63% of a thousand firms surveyed globally reported using mission and value statements as a management tool, right? So that what they're saying is that we're going to use this as a management tool. What you're doing, Mr. Employee 123, does not adhere to and is not alignment with what we are doing in accordance with our value statement. Uh, firms with a clearly communicated, widely understood, and collectively shared mission and vision have been shown to perform better than those without them. Right? So if you don't have a vision, if you don't have a mission, uh, more than likely you will not be performing up to the level of those that do. So what's the difference? And that's a, that's a great question because sometimes people use these interchangeably and that's absolutely not correct. Uh, mission statements, communicating the organization's reason for being uh, and how it aims to serve its key stakeholders often integrates a summation of the firm's values and the mission statement tends to be longer than the vision statement. Now on to the vision statements. Vision statement is a future-oriented de uh, declaration of the organization's purpose and aspirations. These are the things that we want to do in our organizational life. Uh, address what a firm wants to become. And vision statements tend to be relatively brief. <clears throat> All right, so if we look at this and uh, uh, in a mission statement, and I'm going to have to lift it up to get like a little bit closer on that because uh, I can't really see it. Uh, don't laugh. Uh, Starbucks describes uh, six guiding principles in their full mission statement that also communicate an organization's values. So they provide a great work environment and treat each other with respect and dignity. Well, let me think. If I can't see it all that great. Maybe you can't see it all that great either, so let's just go ahead and enlarge that. So provide a great work environment and treat each other with respect and dignity, right? That's, a, that's something that you should definitely do. Embrace diversity as essential component in the way that we do business. Apply the highest standards of excellence to purchasing, roasting, and fresh delivery of our coffee. Develop enthusiastically satisfied customers all the time. Contribute positively 
uh, to our communities and our environment and recognize that profitability is essential to our future success and you see that profitability being essential to their success is on there as number six so you see that's what what Starbucks is is definitely about now when you go to Starbucks for all of you coffee fans how many of you guys have um, have have had a bad experience with those baristas right you know they're looking for people who are very enthusiastic just like in and out they're looking for very enthusiastic uh, individuals so uh, so you have to know what what type of company and, and what they're looking for uh, so while a vision describes what an organization desires to become in the future an organization's mission is grounded in the past and the present mission outlines the reasons for the organization's uh, existence and explains what role it plays in society. A, a well-written mission statement captures the organization's identity and helps to answer the fundamental questions of who are we? Uh, as a, pro a practical matter, a mission statement explains a key stakeholder why they should support the organization. The following examples illustrate the connections between the organizations and the needs of their key stakeholders. So let's go ahead and check these out. So let me uh, enlarge that a little bit for you. All right. So Harley Davidson, we ride with our customers and apply the deep connection in every market we serve to create superior value for all of our stakeholders. Sounds about right. The Internal Revenue Service, I'm sure most of you guys don't want to hear from them unless you're getting a big check back, uh, provide America's taxpayers top quality service by helping them understand and meet their responsibilities and enforce the law with integrity and fairness to all. Starbucks, which we just talked about, to inspire and nurture the human spirit, one person, one cup, and one neighborhood at a time. Remember I talked about it being concise. The Estee Lauder, oh, Estee Lauder, <laughs> I don't use makeup, so the Estee Lauder uh, company, uh-oh, hold on, let's go back, went too far, scroll back, talk about some makeup, right, so Estee Lauder company, uh, bringing the best to everyone we touch and being the best in everything that we do. And uh, Limited Brands. Limited Brands is committed to building the family of world's best fashion brands, offering captivating customer experiences that drive long-term loyalty and deliver sustained growth for our shareholders. So you notice that they said for our shareholders, which are people who purchase stock as opposed to our stakeholders. Uh, Fender Musical Instruments. We will exceed the expectations of music enthusiasts worldwide and create a community for individual expression by focusing on our people, products, and the business experience. All right, so let's minimize that a little bit more. Draw that in. Let's talk about this slide. Let's let's talk about some sample visions. All right. So an organization's vision describes what the organization hopes to become in the future. So this is not what we currently are, but what we hope to be. Uh, when you look at like. Um, uh, human relations and you look at your ideal self this is the company's ideal self the visions highlight the values and aspirations that lay at the heart of the organization although vision statements have the potential to inspire employees customers and other stakeholders uh, vision statements are relatively rare and good visions are even rare right so they're even more rare to have a, have a good vision some of the visions being pursued by businesses today are offered below Al Alcoa uh, to be the best company in the world <clears throat> in the eyes of our customers, shareholders, communities, and people, right? The best company, uh, you know, in the specific field or just the best company anywhere, right? You know, Google may have that one sewn up. Uh, Avon, to be the best company or to be the company that best understands and satisfies the product, service, and self-fulfillment needs of women globally. Chevron, to be the global en energy company most admired for its people, partnership, and performance. Uh -huh. And Google, to develop a perfect search engine. Simply put, we want this search engine to be perfect. We want you to look at the computer screen, and whatever you're thinking is going to pop up on the computer screen. That's, that's what we want as, as Google. Uh, Kraft Foods, <clears throat> helping people around the world eat and live better. And then one more that we accidentally skipped. Let's get down to that one. We didn't purposely skip it. Uh, Procter & Gamble. Be and be recognized 
as the best consumer products and services company in the world. Uh, so very interesting when you start to look at all these different uh, visions and see how well they fit uh, and, uh, and go from there. <clears throat> so roles played by mission and vision. Uh, communicate the purpose of the organization to stakeholders, inform strategy development, and develop the measurable goals and objectives by which to gauge success of the organization's strategy. Right, So you have to know how to gauge your success. If you don't know how to gauge your success, then you're not really going to know what success truly is. If you're just out there just working, then you can say, oh, well, we did our best. No, well, you need to be able to gauge your best against what we believe to be uh, <clears throat> the, the benchmark that's put out there. So discussion questions, remember, those are on your own or with your family, with your dog, with your cat. Whoever you want to talk to, look in the mirror, ask the questions yourself. But do not just skip over them because I'm skipping over them. Those are for you to learn more about the subject matter. <clears throat> so roles played by mission, vision, and organizing. So leading <clears throat> involves influencing others towards the attainment of organizational objectives, right? So you know there's a difference between a leader and a manager. The leader is saying, hey, I want to influence you, whether it be by charismatic power, um, uh, influential power or uh, or distinct power that you have as being that person's manager you want to uh, influence others toward the attainment of certain organizational goals <clears throat> so you want to establish performance standards every company needs to have performance standards uh, because you need to be able to measure things uh, compare actual performance against uh, standards so if you're looking at this in the accounting world you would uh, compare your budgeted versus actual we budgeted for this to occur and this is what actually happened and then you want to take corrective action whenever necessary. And that goes, you know, holds true in any, any portion of business. Uh, more discussion questions such as how might vision and mission influence organizational design? Just make sure uh, that you go over the, all those, of these questions, uh, read the book, find out where they are, and, you know, uh, educate yourself in regards to, you know, the type of discussion questions that we should be having. Uh, again, more with mission and vision. Mission and vision. Uh, so creati creativity is the power or ability to invent, right? So hopefully uh, some of you guys are creative in some way, shape, or form. If you're not, I believe that you are, and you just need to find out what you're creative in. Uh, and passion is an intense emotion, uh, intense emotion compelling action. So I'll read that again. Passion is an intense emotion compelling action right so you see people who are passionate about their work and you see others that are not it's a big difference between those two people and their attitude right <clears throat> so four creativity types so we're going to look at different types of, of of individuals that are creative so you have investment the goal is the first mover so key features you have vision of being first or fast uh, highly competitive problems attacked directly Right, so just think about like if you're first to the market. If I made the very first laptop, doesn't matter how big and clunky it is, I'm first to the market. And a lot of people are going to buy it. Uh, improvement goal: get better. Key features: vision of being systematically better, problem clarification, quality control, process control, and incremental uh, in, uh, improvement. Right, so you want to improve here and there, here and there. <clears throat> uh, imagination: the goal is novelty. So key features, unique and revolutionary visions, exploration, experimentation, risk-taking, transformational ideas, and incubation. Uh, goal is sustainability. When they say sustainability, they mean keeping this company along, around for a long time, and that's why they incubate, because they want to come up with great ideas. <clears throat> so key features, a vision based on empowerment, a trust, building, teamwork, involvement, cohesion, and coordination all right so before we get on to uh, slide 21 creativity uh, tools and scamper uh, I'm gonna go ahead and end this video uh, so this is part four lecture part one and then go ahead and click on the next video which will immediately uh, follow this which will be principles of management chapter 2 part 2